is better than life. Thy loving kindness Check. is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands unto thy name. I lift my hands up unto thy name. I lift my hands up unto thy name. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands unto thy name. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise Thus will I bless thee, I will lift up my hands unto thy name. Sing it with us. I lift my hands up unto thy name. I lift my hands up unto thy name. My lips shall praise. Thus will I bless thee, I will lift up my hands unto thy name. So some of you were standing, I don't know why you're sitting back down. She's going to make you stand up one more again. Church? One more again. If you have a praise book in front of you, um, please join in with us this morning and sing along. We're going to sing the song, This is the Day. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's Making right. sure she, I'm reading the one she pointed to. <laughs> it's like, no, just, if you started singing another one, that would just be bad. Number 61 in your praise books. They look like this. Not your hymns, but your praise book. And if you know it, please sing along with us, and we'll, we'll sing it a couple times to get in the hang of it. And Annette, have your tambourine ready. For I love the tambourine. Yes. Thank you. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Again. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, 
and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Sounds good, church. Added some other words that weren't in front of you in those praise books. But we, yes, yes. we like to kind of roll some songs together, and um, we hope you get familiar with them every time we sing it. Uh, we love when y'all sing along with us and praise the Lord in song. You might know this one. It's called Better Is One Day. How lovely is your dwelling place, O oh Lord Almighty. My soul longs and even faints for you. For shadow of your wings. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts and a thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is and a thousand elsewhere one thing I ask that I would seek to see your beauty to find you in the place your glory One thing I ask that I would see to see your beauty to find you in the place your glory a thousand elsewhere better is one day in your courts better is one day in your house better is one day in your courts and a thousand elsewhere my heart and flesh cry out for you the living god your spirit's water to my soul I've tasted and I've seen, come once again to me, I will draw near to you, I will draw near to you. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts and a thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts and a thousand elsewhere. Let's do that again. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts and a thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts in a thousand elsewhere.
We are here to worship, aren't we, church? You might know this song. It's called, I Love You, Lord. Sing it with me. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy. for singing with us, church. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good to see everyone here this beautiful, warm morning. Amen. I told them it was so warm that the Mary Kay Primer Foundation is wearing off. <laughs> <laughs> ladies know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is a true test of makeup really stays on in heat. <laughs> but God bless you for being God's house today. Lord bless you. And um, those some started back to school this past week. I know the parents are happy and a lot going on. And there'll be a few more weeks, yes, and I'll be starting back to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard, I tell you. I know it's difficult. But um, the routine gets back in the house, I guess. But um, Lord bless all our young people and our teachers and students and faculties, all those involved. We appreciate them. And like I said, thank you for being in God's house this morning. God is good, isn't he? Amen. All the time, God is good. Amen. As you keep in prayer, um, Dr. A. Premier, how do you pronounce it? Guggen? Gillum. Gillum, thank you. I thought I had it right in my head. You the name, uh, gentleman, fine man. Um, let's pray for his family and his passing. And um, they're looking for a lady named Terry, and I'm sorry to get a nest name in the area. She's missing. So a woman. Terry Eads. Eads, thank you. So ask for prayers. She'll be found, and she'll be okay. I don't know, but let's keep her in prayer and her family in prayer. Um, Asking, Deasia had a birthday. I think I missed it last couple weeks ago. Deasia had a birthday. Yeah. The first. Okay. And um, Pastor Terry Sheff is a missionary, uh, one of the mission pastors there in North Carolina. His birthday is tomorrow. Kara Woods is tomorrow. Carol Verrier, happy birthday. Amen. Ashley yeah. Woods, I'm just going to say, yeah. And uh, August 5th is Torrance Hedricks. And several others have birthdays and anniversaries. God bless each of you. And I appreciate you being here in God's house this morning. Welcome, visitors. And um, just thankful to have you here at this time. We'll go ahead and take our morning tithes and offerings for our deacons that come forward. As you keep those in travel in your prayers, I appreciate that.
those have been thinking about buying these new flip-flop shoes. They're called Ice Cube flip-flop shoes. Isn't that a great idea? Do it yourself. Ice cubes. Put the flip-flop on it. Put it on your feet and keep on sliding. But anyway, <laughs> I see that on Facebook. I thought, that's a great idea. <laughs> Lasts a little while. <laughs> Please, come on up. Come on up. Or I'll give you a microphone. You need a microphone. You need a mic. You need a mic. You need a mic. Come on up here. Please, come I want to come, come on, on up. up. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping you'd come up here and tell us. Yeah. Three weeks ago, I came up here for prayer because uh, surgeons wanted to cut my thumb off. And I had cancer under the nail. And uh, Caitlin prayed, the, the church prayed for me. And we were led to a second opinion. And we got the word Friday that that surgeon can save my thumb. So anybody that doesn't think prayer works, come and see me. Amen. 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 Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is so good. I'm going to ask the brother, Dr. John Simmons Jr., to come on up. Got, he's our round robin this morning. Amen. Put your hands together for him. I appreciate him coming this morning. Bless us with the word. Got lots more coming up as well. We appreciate those listening. By radio and watching by television as well, and, and say hi to Helen Breen Ridge and all those out in the UK that's listening in as well. Come on, brother. Thank you, Donna. We'll be uh, going to 2 Timothy, uh, beginning with verse 3, but let's have some prayer first. Would you bow your head, please? Thank you, Lord, for this time you've given us to be together. Help us to uh, explicate your word here and help us to uh, understand it with our brains and also with our heart. And help us uh, throughout the week in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16. I'll give you a minute to find that. Counting off 60 seconds here. Uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, yeah. that the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And then I... Uh, take you to Matthew 4, 4, where Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Right. Now, when Jesus said uh, every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, he's talking about everything that's in this Bible. Jesus put his sanction on all of the writers of the Bible, the uh, human writers, because they were all uh, moved by the Holy Spirit and they wrote what God wanted them to write. And so uh, if Paul wrote it or Timothy wrote it or Peter wrote it or any of them, uh, John, then... Uh, Jesus was saying that's, uh, that's God speaking. And so we can't make a distinction between what Jesus said and what the other writers said. So uh, in chapter 3 and verse 1, know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. We have a companion text, which is over in Romans. Romans chapter 1. You could have guessed that, couldn't you? Romans chapter 1. Now let's go first to uh, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. 
and uh, go to verse 24. Well, actually, verse 22, where it says, Professing to be wise, they became fools. That's when uh, a man or a woman thinks they're no more than God does. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. And uh, who exchanged the truth of God, verse 25, for the lie, and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. Skip down to verse 27. The men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which is due. So we go back to 2 Timothy where it says uh, perilous times will come. And I'm here to tell you perilous times have come. Uh, there's a mayor of a city in Wisconsin and his name is Buddha Judge, And uh, he happens to be queer. Now, uh, some people don't like that word, uh, but uh, he, uh, that's what he is. He, uh, well, the Bible has a lot to say about sodomy, and over in Sodom and Gomorrah, the people were, were uh, killed off because of uh, the way they treated each other. I've got a friend uh, who happens to be an Episcopalian, and uh, he said one time to me, he said, you know, I agree with verse 27 where it says that men shouldn't burn in their lust for one another. He said, but I don't think there's anything wrong with women having sex with other women. Now, as far as I know, Almost everybody in here is an adult, so I can speak to you as adults, except for Roger and Lenny back there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm <like my> ears. <laughs> Do that. Uh, okay. Uh, but this man uh, says, you cannot tell me who to love. And he... Uh, he has sex with, with men, and uh, he has a wife, uh, actually a husband. I don't know who's the wife and who's the husband. It's none of my business. But anyway, uh, he said, you can't tell me who I can love. I said, and I'm thinking, well, right. Jesus said, love everybody, but don't sodomize anybody. Okay? It's just wrong to do that. And this friend I had uh, who said it, he thought it was okay for women to burn in lust toward each other. I, I showed in verse 26 there, and where has he had been uh, a very good friend of mine. All of a sudden, he just, he, he wasn't my friend anymore. He doesn't come over to the house anymore. He just didn't like what I, what I read to him. But it was the word of God. And Jesus said, man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And that proceeded from the mouth of God. So we do. We do live in perilous times. So let's go back then to uh, chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. Know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and holy, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutals, despisers of good, traitors, 
headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, mm -hmm. having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away. There are people who come to church who have a form of godliness. Mm -hmm. You look at them and you say, wow, man, he's really holy. But uh, if you deny the power of God, uh, there's nothing holy about you. You're unholy. And so he says, uh, traitors, headstrong, he said, from such people turn away. Lovers of self or selfish people like to trample on the rights of other people. They think of themselves as the center of the universe. The world just revolves around them. You know people like that. Maybe you are a people like that. But anyway, there's also the love of money, and they'll do anything to be rich. <sighs> disobedient to parents. Notice that he puts disobedient to parents over in Romans chapter uh, 1. He puts that in the same category as uh, sodomizers. And he says all of these people if you go on down, it says they are worthy of death. But you didn't, I bet you didn't know that disobedience to parents uh, made you worthy of death. But uh, thank God there's somebody who will uh, save you from death, even if you are disobedient to your parents. And he'll straighten you out, and he will save you. His name is Jesus Christ. So... When you come to the end of this service and there is an invitation, if you're disobedient to your parents or any of these other sins, just come to the altar and we'll pray with you. Thank you, Brother John. Amen. God's Word. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to ask, uh, we're going to change a little bit on the program this morning. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Mike, if you're ready to do a scripture reading at this time. Come on. <laughs> I think we're going to be in for a treat, too. <laughs> You'll see. Brother Mike Duff, amen. Morning, church. <laughs> I'm reading Timothy chapter 3 this morning. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> hey, it's so good, we're going to read it again. Coming a little different. I'm coming from the book. Same meaning. Everything's right there. We need to hear it several times today. No doubt about it. But I'm going to say one thing about homosexuality before I say that. It's just plain nasty. I don't know how you can get around any of that. That's just filth right there. If you're living in that lifestyle this morning, you better come to this altar and get your lifestyle changed. I can assure you of that. Because you're not going to be in heaven. Don't think that you're living in that lifestyle and you're going to be in heaven. It's not going to happen. Jesus says that right there. And that world has gotten pretty filthy and pretty nasty. And I'm telling you, if God comes, Jesus himself comes back, there's going to be a lot of unhappy people. A lot of them. This ain't no time to play, folks. I'm telling you that right now. You're playing on the fence right now. You're playing with your life. Remember, it's everlasting life that we're going for. This, this down here is nothing but a trial for us to go to everlasting life. So remember that. If everyone please rise for the reading. The dangers of the last days. And listen to these words. These are pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty easy to understand. And this is exactly what's happening right now. We're not waiting for this to happen. This is happening right now today as I speak. It's happening right now. You should also know this, Timothy. 
that in the last days there will be very difficult times for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to parents and ungrateful. <clears throat> they will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and have no interest in what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act as if they are religious but they will reject the power that could make them godly. You must stay away from people like that. They are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women who are burdened with guilt of sin and controlled by many desires. Such women are forever following new teachings, but they never understand the truth. And these teachers fight the truth just as James and Jambres fought against Moses. Their minds are depraved and their faith is counterfeit. But they won't get away with this for long. Someday everyone will recognize what fools they are just as happened with Janes and Jambres. Take that to heart, folks. Because that's exactly what's going on right now. And a lot worse. Maybe see them. I want to thank y'all last week to those that filled in last Sunday that sang um, Leela and who else sang? Martha? And Nikki, Nikki, not here this morning, but thank you all so much. I got to listen upstairs over the TV in the nursery, and it was really wonderful to know that we have people that will step up and fill in the gap, and people that, not just showing up, but talented, and it's, it's really wonderful that Solid Rock has such wonderful people and um, willing to give of their selves on Sunday morning, so thank you all so much, and we look forward to more of that, so y'all give them a hand. Yeah, thank you, guys. We're going to sing a couple of songs um, before we continue with the service, and y'all re may remain seated. Um, this is a Mercy Me song, and we've been singing it for a few years, and we've done it here quite a bit, and I hope it uh, blesses you this morning. Take this world from me I don't need it anymore I am finally free My heart is broken for Child of the risen Lord, to hear you say this one's mine, my heart is spoken for, now I have a peace I've never known. myself complete oh my heart is spoken for oh and I 
covered by your love divine. A child of the risen Lord. To hear you say this one's mine. My heart is broken for. And by the power of the cross. You have taken what was lost and made it fully yours. And I have been redeemed by you who spoke to me. Now I am spoken for, covered by your love divine. A child of the And if you'd like to sing along with us on this next song, um, you may do so. Uh, turn in your hymn books to page 145. We're going to sing it as well with my soul. I think we could all use a little bit of that this morning, a little confirmation um, of God's goodness in our life. When peace like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, Thou hast taught me to say, it is well.
Boy, it's quiet in here. Be looking in just a, a few minutes in Psalm chapter 24. When I got up this morning, that was the last thing I wanted to do was get out to bed. I had a fever. I was hurting all over. And I'd been getting sick since Friday night because I know, but I know what this is. It's nothing but an attack, and I'm going to be fine. Matter of fact, I'm feeling better already now that I'm in God's house. But I realized this morning while I was sitting on the edge of the bed listening to the devil telling me to lay back down and go to sleep, I'm on an errand for the king. And if you are saved, if you are a child of God, you are too. You are on Aaron for the king, not the king of England or the king of France, but the king of kings and the Lord of lords. You are doing his business. How could I do anything less but be here? He gave me a message Friday night to give you, and I don't care what the devil tried. I'm coming here to deliver it this morning. And God will sustain me. And keep me going. This week in the news, the more I looked at it, the worse the news got. And I'm telling you all of this to tell you why I'm telling you and what we need to do. But I read where the Kansas City public schools are now installing gender neutral bathrooms in all of their schools including two elementary schools where girls and boys will go to the same bathroom in Kansas City. Kansas City. On July the 18th, it was reported that the American Library Association, you would think that would be like the most benign, mildest thing there could be. The American Library Association's recent national conference provided librarians from across the country with strategies to bring drag queens into the public libraries despite parental objections in all local communities across America. They held workshops for librarians. Instead of telling them the right way to do their job and run the libraries, they had several workshops. One of them was called Queerness in Comics. Another was, was called A Child's Room to Choose, Encouraging Gender Identity in, and Expression in School and Public Libraries. LGBT. BTQ creators and characters in kids' comics, reading the rainbow, teaching children about pride in LGBTQ. Another workshop, are you going to tell my parents the minor's right to privacy in the public libraries? And telling stories, expanding boundaries, drag queen story times in libraries. That is an America right now, right now, not something prophesied, right now. And then you got people, a lot of Christians going, well, you know, Trump's the president, so everything's fine now. You're an idiot if you believe that. Just because Trump is the president does not mean that any of this will stop. It doesn't. It doesn't mean God put him in there uh, against all odds. He shouldn't have won. It was impossible. Everybody said there was no way, but God put him in there for one thing really only, and that was to keep us from forming the one world government. That's all it was, to put a stop to it because they, the, the atmosphere was that we would be right now under the NWO and we would lose our sovereignty and the Antichrist would be in power and it wasn't time yet. And so God put him in there to stop it. You can get mad one way or the other all you want. But that's why he's there. He's not your pastor. He's not there to be your spiritual leader. Unfortunately, we don't have spiritual leaders much anymore. They got backbones made out of jelly. And they're so scared they're going to offend somebody. 
that they won't look up, they won't say nothing. All they ring, do is wring their hands and holler, well, we got to love everybody. Well, you do have to love everybody, but if you love somebody, doggone it, you'll tell them the truth and not lie to them and send them to hell. All of the times of freedom that we have is just about over. All of our governments, federal, state, and local, are still corrupt and evil. See it every day. And I thank God for the people that are trying to work inside of government to put a stop to it. We have people in here that are active, and I'm very proud of them that they're trying to turn the tide. But man, you got your job cut out for you. And even though the president may be doing all he can, he's actually alone up there with no one to back him. And it would take 20 years to undo the damage that has been done over the decades. Our governments, nobody wants to hear this, but they're finding it out every day. Our government leaders, our, all of the different um, community leaders are full of pedophiles and sexual deviants of every kind. And now they have turned their attention to your children to ensure that their agenda will continue. Christians who speak up are being banned from their schools. They're being banned from their jobs. They're definitely being banned from social media. Students in the United Kingdom are being expelled if they protest against the sexual perversion that is being taught in their schools, and it's headed here. It's up in Canada, and it's getting ready to sneak across the border and come down in here right now. Islam is taking America by storm, one city at a time. And in fact, in some cities, they are, are judging by Sharia law, and Christian ministers are being stoned and attacked in the streets when they try to evangelize in that city, and that is in America. That is in America right now. Our cities, our big cities, have become third world filth holes, and they are allowing people, and I saw the videos of it, to use the bathroom right in the middle of the street, right on the sidewalks in broad daylight. A dog won't do that. They'll at least go to somebody else's yard. Have you ever? And they put these mats down for people to do that, and they send people along with white has, hazmat suits to pick it up at the end of the day. Doesn't that sound like something out of an apocalyptic movie? It's happening right now in major cities in America. And here's a good one. The bubonic plague is back. After centuries and centuries, rats have taken over L.A. and other big cities and they're carrying bubonic plague and people are catching it again. And it's hitting all the major cities of California and it's poised to become an epidemic again all because of filthy politics. The governor of Virginia, this used to be the Bible Belt, said now that he's all for killing a newborn baby if the parents don't want it. He said it. I listened to him. And he's supposed to be a pediatrician. They need to jerk his license, first of all, and ride him out of Richmond, tarred and feathered on a rail. I don't care who hears it. Put it on TV. Many places in America, children can wake up in the morning picking whatever gender they want to be and are encouraged to do so. I could... Here, I could see what my daddy would have done if I told him I felt like a girl one morning. Oh, Lord, have mercy. America, my friends, is sinking fast. We do not have much time before it is too late, but we think we're okay. Most Christians, if you ask them, they think that they're okay because we still have a little bit of freedom in this country, but that's going fast. They're whittling away a little at a time like the frog in the pot. You can put a frog in a pot of cold water and he'll sit there and turn the heat on and he will sit and wait until it boils and it kills him before he'll try to get out. We still have prosperity, but that could be gone tonight. 
We still have churches to go to, but that could be outlawed soon if we don't act now. Most countries and even uh, 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 places in this country says that what I'm telling you is hate speech, that it's bigoted, it's hateful, and they want to put a stop to it. And then we have Christians, supposed to be Christians, of sitting around doing nothing. Oh, it's the president's job. We, we elected him to do No, it ain't. He's, he's not a pastor. He's not an evangelist. It's, it's your job to make a difference. It's your job to put a stop to what's going on in this country. Folks, we need a revival. And we need it yesterday. We need it yesterday. And I'm not talking about one where you bring in a guest speaker and you have some special music and you run it for about three days and everybody pats it, evangelists on the back and said, man, that was some real good preaching and everybody goes home and nothing changes. That's not a revival. That's an evangelistic meeting. The last big revival that I have heard of was in an island in Scotland in 1949 that lasted several years. And it was an absolutely amazing, life-changing thing. But the kind of revival that we need, and this is not popular, and this is not fashionable at all, but it is an old-fashioned, crying, weeping, confessing, repenting, sin-purging, Holy Ghost revival, and that is the only hope that this country has of staying on its feet for just a few more years. Our Wednesday nights, I, I tell people about our Wednesday nights all the time, and they say, well, you know, no, I can't think of anything more boring than going to a Bible study when we got something so cool on TV right now to watch tonight. <laughs> or it's a school night, or it's, I got to work early in the morning. I got to do this and I got to do that. And let me tell you something, you were missing out on a blessing. Last Wednesday night, it, we, we, had, we planned to do one of them boring Bible studies. <laughs> we have a a, a, a discipleship class for half an hour before six and then at six we, we give testimonies and it started getting good and it turned into an entire testimony service and Cheryl was the only one that I asked to give her testimony and she said well I won't need but about 10-15 minutes and it turned into we went into overtime and other people wanted to give a testimony and let me tell you something it was some powerful stuff y'all need that I need that where we can listen to other Christians talk and, 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 and say what God did for them and, and they can admonish us and we can pick up something from it and learn and become better Christians and get encouraged. That's why we have Wednesday night. Find out what the Bible says, listening to testimonies. Cheryl Robertson got up. Y'all don't know that that girl could preach. She's quiet, but she told it like it was. And, and I've been airing it on YouTube. And this was the one thing she said that if you don't remember any else of it, she said either you're all in or you're all out. There is no gray area. There's no one foot in, in the Christian life and a foot in the world. God, it, it, it makes, the Bible says it makes God sick to his stomach and he'll spew you out of his mouth. A lukewarm Christian. Any of you ever drink any lukewarm water? How nasty that tastes. Well, that's what it tastes like to God when he sees a Christian that's supposed to love him and supposed to be all in for him, acting lukewarm. If you want a revival, if you want something to really change, starting in your church, you better be all in. God sees and he knows, and there's no faking it with him. In Psalm chapter 24 and verse number 3, they ask this question, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? Who is it that will have the privilege to stand before God one day? Who is it that will have the privilege of walking through the gates of heaven one day? He said this, he who has clean hands Clean hands. What does it mean? What does, are your hands clean? You know, a, a deacon in a barn 
in, uh, in, in, in Scotland held his, read this verse while they were praying, and he held his hands up. Y'all can hold your hands up. Hold your hands up for a moment for the Lord. And he said, Lord, are my hands clean? Say that with me. Lord, are my hands clean? And the moment he said that, God stepped down onto that little island and just tore it apart. And people right and left were getting saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and confessing their sins and crying before God. And it lasted for several years until it swept that whole island. A simple verse was, Lord, is my hands clean? What does God see when he sees your hands? Are they covered by the blood of your brothers and sisters that you have ignored and failed to witness to and failed to help? Or are they covered by the blood of Jesus Christ? He's going to see one of the two. And the only way to cleanse your hands is with the blood of Christ. Said that he who hath a pure heart. What does God see when he looks at your heart? Most of us would be, a, would be terrified if they took a projector and a screen right here and put our thoughts on that screen that we've had through the last week. And you know where those thoughts come? They come from your heart. If you have evil in your heart, if you have uncleanness in your heart, it comes out of your mouth, it goes into your thought life. I'm going to tell you something. Every one of us could stand a little heart cleaning today. That's who God is looking for, are people that have a pure heart. And those who have not lifted up their soul unto vanity and that have not sworn deceitfully, people that haven't gone around lying and had their hearts filled with vanity and emptiness, those are the ones who will ascend into the hill of the Lord and stand in the holy place. Just because you're a member of Solid Rock Church, just because you've been dunked in the baptistry, or you maybe have come forward and repeated something that somebody told you to say, does not ensure you a place in front of God's throne. It's only if the heart is changed by the gospel of Jesus and that your sins have been taken away by the blood of Christ. But if you can't wait to get out of here and go back into the world and sin, then you better think real, real hard as to whether you got the real thing or not. Don't let the devil fool you into thinking that you're all right with him and you're still out enjoying sin and doing all the things of the world and it doesn't bother you and it doesn't convict you that maybe you're not all in for the Lord. God's not going to stand for lukewarm. It's either you're all in or you're all out. And it said this person that is all in will receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. And then he says this, Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting door, and the king of glory shall come in. Lift up your heads, cleanse your hands, cleanse your heart, and let God come through the gates. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. And really to continue the thought, the Psalm of David in Psalms chapter 25. You should read that every day as a prayer until the fire falls. Listen to it. And, and read this as you're reading it to the Lord. This is our prayer this morning. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. 
Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me, and they will not. If you trust in the Lord and the Lord alone. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress or sin without cause. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. That's what we need this morning is a return to the word of God and not to what we have created in our mind as to what God should be for us. Most of us have a carnival rendition of Christ and of God and of the Holy Spirit as being a genie in a lamp that's there at their bidding. We, in fact, are at their bidding. <clears throat> we are to be doing what they say, what they ask of us, and what they tell us to do. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you do I wait all the day. If the answer has not come yet, wait on the Lord. He's got an answer for you and he will give it to you and he will come and help you, but you've got to wait on him and not try to take it in your own hands. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindnesses, for they have ever been of old. Boy, this is something that most all of us need to pray earnestly. Lord, remember not the sins of my youth. Aren't you glad that he doesn't? We remember them, don't we, unfortunately and sadly. And with a lot of things, that if I could rewind and do it again, boy, i tell you one thing, I'd, I'd be a lot smarter, I'd be a lot healthier, I'd be a lot wiser. But I'm sorry, this is what we got to work with right now. But thank God he does not remember those sins. Nor my transgressions, according to thy mercy, remember me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. And all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Keep what you promised God you were going to do. Keep the word of God, what he tells you to do to make your life successful. And it says, for, my, for thy name's sake, O Lord, forgive my sin, for it is great. You know, we sit here this morning and we think we're doing God a favor because, man, we've been really good all week. Matter of fact, there's some of you sitting here that maybe you think, well, I've been good most of my life. I really haven't done all the stupid things that you did, Dave. Well, I know that's a lie. <laughs> y'all forget, y'all confess everything to me all the time. <laughs> but you know what we need to do? We need to realize that we're nothing. We are nothing before a holy God. I don't care how many of these 611 Levitical laws you kept, the Ten Commandments you kept, all the commandments in here that you've kept, your righteousness and my righteousness before God, according to the prophet Isaiah, look like filthy rags. Until those rags get washed in the precious blood of Jesus, they look filthy to God. Nobody in here stands righteous before him. Everybody in here needs to confess their sins to the Lord and get right with him, get it under the blood, get it cleansed, and start living for him. The reason we don't have revival, the reason the Holy Spirit just doesn't fall on this community is he's waiting on his people to get right. He cannot trust a revival to a people that will not obey him. He can't. And the longer we sit and wait, the less time we have until finally we wind up with nothing at all. So, like Cheryl said Wednesday night, either you're all in or you're all out. I'm going to tell you something. Don't, don't just look at me and a few key people. A church is only as strong as its weakest link. I don't care who you are. 
God expects you to live right in front of him and in front of everyone else. And if you don't, it does away with the stuff that the other people are trying to do. It's a joint effort. And everyone in the church has got that claims Jesus as Savior has got to be right with him and have got to be completely sold out to him. Will it inconvenience you? Yes, it will. Will it be tough to do that? Yeah, it will. It will. But look at what he gave up from you and me. He went through the most horrible torture that anybody could go through and gave his life for us. And so if Christ be God and died for me, there is nothing too hard for me to do for him. We need to be men and women and, not, and quit acting like little whiny brats and start bucking up and serving God and doing what we're supposed to do. Quit thinking about yourself. I don't matter and neither do you in the scheme of things. He is the only one. The greatest prophet that ever walked the face of the earth according to Jesus himself was John the Baptist. And the only thing he could say, there's a man coming after me whose shoes I'm not even worthy to tie. And he started fading out of the forefront and he said, he must increase, but I must decrease. Have you decreased yet? Or is it still all about you? Let's make it all about him today. And let's be all in. Not just one foot in heaven and the other foot in hell. Put it all in. It's a scary thing. But once you give that to him and once you trust that to him, you will be shocked at what he'll do for you. I don't care what anybody else tells you. I don't care what the world is saying. Give it all to him today and he'll make a difference. What I mean by giving it all to him, first of all, if you've never been saved, you need to give your life to him. You need to come and trust him this morning as your savior. If you are already saved, you need to be on fire for him. Not cold, not lukewarm. You need to be on fire for him and you need to be all in. Maybe this morning you want to come and pray for somebody else. Whatever your situation may be, I'm going to ask everyone to stand. <clears throat> this is the time we do business with God. There will be people down here to receive you, our prayer warriors. They'll be here to pray with you if you have a need. Whatever your situation may be, come and make it all in with him this morning. Would you come around the altar and pray? If you need someone to pray with you, take one of these folks by the hand and get them to pray with you. It's all out or it's all in. The decision is yours this morning. Nails in your hands, the nails in your feet. That's the message from the Lord. Tell me now it's up to you to